Hi, everybody, and welcome to a Gem of a Secret podcast. My name is Donatella, my secrets. And my name is Coco Gem Holiday. Coco, how are you doing today? Um, I'm good. Once again, I have a cocktail in hand because I can mm. only talk to our viewers while I'm drinking. Yeah, 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 exactly. I have this same boxed wine from yesterday. I'm rationing <laughs> it off. <laughs> I am rationing it as uh, this quarantine happens. And uh, what a great segue to go into our topic of this episode. Yeah, so um, we, just to let everybody know, we are filming this when we're in the heart of an almost shelter in place in Portland, Oregon. Mm -hmm. Um, So uh, hopefully, I don't know what's going to happen in the next few days. None of us do. So just keep in mind that is when we're recording this. Yeah. Uh, So the focus of this episode basically is we want to talk about, because we are a drag-focused podcast, we want to talk about what drag means during time of a pandemic. Drag obviously is a very social activity, which we rely on an audience to have people there to support us. A lot of entertainers are not just working for the booking fee, a lot of entertainers start working for tips, and um, a lot of people use it as a source of income. So what does this mean for drag queens during this time, Coco? Yeah, so um, actually, um, I was just thinking about this as you were talking. So I did see a post online before we really get um, into the topic of digital. Mm -hmm. Um, You said something there that was really important. Some drag entertainers didn't want to take their art digital because their performance style is very reactive to a crowd personal it's personal yeah um some people live sing and they want the audience reaction they want the audience to be a participant some people are very uh theatrical and artistic in their drag Mm -hmm. and so they want to show their art in person like it'd be like you think like somebody like paint something Mm -hmm. and then suddenly they show it on the internet i think that's such a good point to bring up because honestly drag is one of those performance styles that is extremely interactive it's like a style of theater um that has audience uh, uh, participation to it you know so it's something that um it does really rely on the reaction that you get from people around you yeah and that's not to negate or, or diminish like some drag artists who are just actually this kind of fits in. Some drag artists, like um, T-Rex, mm-hmm. mainly do hosting. Yeah. And so how do you host digitally? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you Actually, that's specifically, you can't do that. Really. Yeah. And you're someone who hosts a lot of shows. So, yeah. you know, if even if it were that we were able to host shows with other entertainers like around us, like you're not getting that interaction from the people that are viewing because you can't see them only they can see you and what you're doing yeah it's it's something that you thrive on that (laughs) energy from the audience and you're not getting that it's true and actually i have a point about that i'll bring up later when we talk about what happened with our live show we're quarantined but another point is i don't want to diminish like diminish like photo uh photo entertainers um yeah i know there's a lot of uh drag artists who you know are in magazines and things Mm -hmm. like that or instagram yeah and they're they're notarized so they weren't necessarily affected at the same level as the people who are just performance uh performative drag so not to diminish you all but you understand what we're getting at with like the whole performance aspect of drag so um yeah so let's talk about the resilience of drag artists and like what happened with the digital world yeah so we're living in a strange strange time right now um in all of our lives has there never been a pandemic to this magnitude um and this means right now that we're in a position where we can't form like gatherings and crowds we can't be social face to face because of the spread of this virus right now so being in an industry that is primarily social we've had to resort to having shows on different platforms like Facebook Live, Instagram Live. Um, And it's kind of created this paradigm shift, hopefully for a short amount of time, if we can really uh, focus on getting this under control and contained. Um, But that is yet to be seen. Uh, So what, what is, I guess, the future for drag at least the near future for drag right now well and the other thing is too and we're we're definitely not going to give anybody misinformation but let's just go with the average four weeks to six months we're just going to be talking about we're just going to say that's what we're looking at we don't know um as we said is at the time of filming filming this so for me personally like i 
so live drag shows like that's the thing that people started doing is live drag shows and yeah. um I actually haven't watched any of them yeah. not for not because I don't support local drag or any of the things like that it's I just don't have the time I'm you're con- still considered essential I'm an essential worker I'm not going to broadcast where I work but I am still working a full 40 hours and mm-hmm. it's very tiring and so by the time I get home the last thing I want to do in the world is paint a face and the last thing I want to do is watch live drag because I have I'm just like trying to get ready for the next day because this has been so hard. And so the thing is, I think that that's really awesome that a lot of drag artists started being a little bit more resilient by doing their live shows. And the, the artist, the creativity and the artistry that's come out of this has kind of been insane, even yeah. just by the posters. Yeah. Like the posters are better. It's yeah. like, well, you know, I don't have to like care about necessarily like putting up all my posters on the street so I can spend more time making a great uh, fo- poster for like Instagram and Facebook or something yeah, like that. Yeah. For yeah. Sure. I've, I've noticed that. So the creativity on that side. And then I also noticed um, the marketing aspect seems a little bit better too. Yeah. Because people don't have to like, they're just telling you, I want you to watch my art for a second. I feel like there's so many people that are online now too. Mm-hmm. It's like, um, there's a lot of people that are trying to find ways to, fill their time because a lot of people are out of work. I know for me, even though I, I do work from home, I'm, I'm not getting as much work as I, I would like to. So I'm definitely like going online and tuning into some of these live streams. So I feel like we're, there's definitely more of an audience for people to watch. And that's really cool. Yeah. Um, it's still so, you know, I still see it from every entertainer that's doing it too, is mm-hmm. that they they will uh, put their Venmos and their information on there, but they'll be like, I'm not, at, I'm not doing this for money. I'm doing this because I love this. I'm doing this because, you know, like it's something that I know and love to do and I want to keep doing it. And I think that's extremely admirable uh, for all of you to do that. But at the same time, like your art does deserve to have some sort of like compensation for it because like i what you're doing is beautiful and you're doing it in a time when people need this so just know that like yeah like it it kind of feels weird to ask for money i did it the other day and it was the first time i've ever really put my venmo up on my facebook and it was awkward but at the same time it's like you're putting yourself out there during a time when there's a lot of turmoil in the world to try and distract people and i think that's important yeah so um I, so I want to talk about the negative side of it a little bit. So I haven't actually made, so I have a drag for fans page. Mm -hmm. um, And I actually haven't made really any money with that. Um, We did. And so this is a good time. We did have a live show that we were going to do. We were going to try to practice social distancing, only have 10 people and actually filter entertainers in and out of our, um, in our, in, um, in and out of our house so they could perform live on a live stream and it was like Mm. really cool and it was like a really great concept but then after we pretty much had the shelter in place going on then it just kind of fizzled because of that and i feel like too with this pandemic it's been something where the misinformation and the vast (laughs) the varying amounts of information that we've received on this um has made it to where like people are catching up slowly about how serious this is like for me it was like probably a week or a week and a half ago or so that i really especially as someone with my other job who consumes a lot of content realized the severity of of this pandemic currently and that means that we if you're essential you go to work and you do what you do and then you practice your social distancing and if you're not you stay home And um, it's because we also, you know, are living in a society right now where our our government isn't taking this super seriously and we're seeing how it's affecting other countries. So it's, you know, it's it's something that took us all a little bit of time to really realize, I think, the severity of everything. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, there was just no way that we were going to be able to pull that off without and you know putting people at risk even if it was just a handful of people filtering in and out and doing performances one at a time and having like a specific time slot that they came and performed it's still you know it still creates the possibility of um spreading the virus and that's just 
it's something that's irresponsible that we can't do. Yeah, and one of the things, the reason I was bringing it up too is because, like I said earlier in the podcast, is uh, me and Donatella hosted the Mm -hmm. pre-show with our new microphone system and our lights and everything, and I really got my hosting bug out. Yeah. So it was cool to digitally host a show. It was. And then me and Donatella always play off each other super well. Um, that live feed is still actually on my Facebook, sorry, on my Instagram, I think it is, or somewhere, mm-hmm. um, uh, from our show, We're Quarantined. And it really does suck, because it was super cool to be able to get people in here um, to be able to entertain and perform, but now it's just gotten a little bit more serious. Um, the one thing that is true that we can say is, like, we're trying to flatten the curve. Mm-hmm. However we're doing that... Um, you know, regardless, social distancing is how you flatten the curve. Yeah. We don't know if we're being super successful as of the recording of this, but um, there have been some articles out there that say it's somewhat working. Yeah. Um, so to bring it back up a little bit, one we did want to call out um, some of the live shows. So Donna, what are some of the live shows you've seen? And how have people done it? And like, like tell me actually, yeah, tell me. The only one that I saw really was like, Bougie Cherry had one with her drag family. She and did. It, she yeah. had people come call in to her Instagram live. And that was kind of cool. Um, I only yeah. watched like probably like the first like 10 minutes or so. But tell me about what you saw. Tell Talk to us about backgrounds, the music, and all that other stuff. Well, it was really great. You know, it, it kind of functioned as any show does um, where you introduce other um, entertainers. Um, I really liked what Bougie did because um, her and one of her... Um, drag children mercury um they they live together in the same space so they were able to kind of do some of their own stuff uh for the live stream um and then she had people call in um some other shows that i've seen that have been really cool that aren't um as collaborative but there's a lot of really awesome entertainers out here that have been going at it for a very long time uh bolivia carmichael's did an awesome like one woman show that i tuned into live and she did like a really cool puppet act and there were people that yeah there were people that were tuning in left and right and being like hey like how can we tip you how can we do this and i think it's really important for those entertainers that have been doing this for a long time and like this is their livelihood that you tune in and you support those entertainers i know that a lot of us are relying on a tips right now at a time when um, a lot of us don't have money, mm-hmm. and that's and that's um, that's difficult. But still, tune in for those um, those uh, performances. Some other ones that I've seen, um, I believe uh, there was uh, Blondie is one of the local queens Blondie, here in yeah. in Portland, and she's, Blondie had some awesome and, posters. Yeah, they've not only been just doing shows, but also like readings, like tarot. Yeah, and stuff. that's such a cool idea. Mm-hmm. Like, because we all have other skill sets that we can do. You know what I could do? Like, just thinking about it, because I've been drinking. Um, I could, I could have hosted a live show to where I talk about the business side of drag. Um, a little bit more and talk about because seriously this last year the government gave me a FD check Mm -hmm. for all the amount of drag I did because of my miles that I was able to record I can't even do that I don't mean to distract from that but you know as I've been drinking I was like oh I could probably do that (laughs) (laughs) we have to get innovative we have to get creative right now Um, another entertainer that I really want to give props to is uh, Sunny Ray and this is an entertainer that Coco and I have known actually for quite some over, time. Probably over six years at this point. Yeah, because it was around the time that we started drag. So, oh yeah, and we've been doing drag for about seven. Yeah, eight. and <laughs> I think the show is called Sunny with with a or something like yeah, that. Yeah, like Sunny with a like it's a playoff with, of Sunny yeah. with a chance. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Sunny Sunny is such a talented entertainer. They um not only live seeing um but are just so creative and makeup wise have some of the best concepts. So really go on and support them. Yeah. They did a puppet look that I thought was absolutely terrifying. Um, (laughs) And then they did this like, kind of like, um, like sexy sort of like I'm in my bathrobe kind of look or whatever, like in the sheer number. And then had all these cool things going on. And then they did a clown number from what I remember over this last week or so. And that was just, it was so cool to see people like putting that artistic expression to life. My artistic expression is I'm going to see how long I can keep a beard. Um, so I might do a bearded look. Shout out to Flawless Shade, though, yes. who did a bearded drag look, which 
still got read a little bit on the internet. People are really still, we're still in 2020 making people feel bad for doing a, um, a gender look that has a beard. Like it's, it's, you know, it's crazy. It's, um, because I've, I found myself to just relating back to when I've done a beard look before mm-hmm. people will be like, I don't like you with that. And I'm like, yeah. Okay, I was like, it's because you've seen like the glam and stuff. I just wanted to try something different and artistic. But it's like, people are so rigid with um, with gender still that it's like it's it's shocking to see someone who's typically a queen that paints, you know, very stereotypically fem- facial feminized, you know, and stuff, mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden have a beard that people are all of a sudden like <laughs> yeah. triggered by it. I it's, know, it's yeah. terrible. Because I did it too. I did I did one Blondie through uh, Gender Benders Part 2 who yeah. invited me to because if you didn't know, Coco Jim Holiday is by gender. And so the, the fact is, by the way, I don't go by they, them pronouns. And um, so I did my first ever performance bearded drag look Mm -hmm. and there was somebody who did make a joking comment about like you know about the beard on facebook and i know that they were joking well i hope they were Mm -hmm. and it hit me so sideways (laughs) because i was like because it was hard for me to actually go out in public you already had your own insecurities oh so many insecurities yeah and to get read like that and sativa goddamn jones is their drag name said online they're like well i appreciate coco for you know trying something new Mm -hmm. and whatever things like that so you know whatever just as a side note so it's not only local queens that have turned to this platform of digital drag even the uh drag race superstars um that we've seen on shows like dragula and uh rupaul's drag race have um taken to this digital transition that we are having to um yeah, so Work the World Live, it's Bianca Del Rio and Lady Bunny host a global benefit for your favorite stars from RuPaul's Drag Race. And it says that it's $9.99, and I don't know if that is $9.99 to view, mm-hmm. or if that's $9.99 to get the pre-recorded after you see the live event. Mm-hmm. And here's the thing about that for me. So, like, when you think about the booking fees for Drag Race entertainers being from $720 to upwards to $10,000 per booking, uh, like, for even, like, Pride events for them. Like, it kind of hits me sideways just a little bit, and let me explain why. I think everybody deserves their coin, especially if you make it on that platform, you deserve your coin. However, like, local drag artists, like, even myself, like, I didn't make any money from, you know, posting my Venmo or my drag for fans or things like that. And then knowing that these entertainers who already have so much exposure and so much money in the bank if they're doing it right, um is like i don't know it just kind of hits me weird and i know that they they definitely still want to because they obviously have a passion for drag because they're Mm -hmm. still doing it and they deserve to make their money too but so i really hope i hope beyond hope that 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 live show is free Mm -hmm. i really do i i'm sorry i do hope that it's free that people out there who love drag race because i do say there is a difference between people who do love drag race and drag fans. Mm-hmm. And I know that we've all seen that meme and we've all seen those quotes and we've all seen those articles. But that if you're supporting the drag race girls, you better be supporting your local girls. Da 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 da. Yeah. Yeah. Seriously. I, I mean, which I mean, it's true. It's I'm not trying to make fun of it because it's something that I mean, I also I mean, as a drag entertainer, you have to kind of preach that to some extent. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. I super agree. So yeah. um, hopefully it is free. And, you know, <laughs> The thing about this whole what we're going through right now is that people are finding, like we said, innovative ways to be able to showcase their art to the world. Mm -hmm. Uh, Donna, actually, let's talk about your series that you're doing. Yeah. um, Because that, um, at the time of this recording, you'll probably have more than one One. look out at the time. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, So the thing is, I, uh, about two years ago now, uh, a little less than two years ago, I did a um, Seven Deadly Sins makeup series where I just did a different look for each of the Seven Deadly Sins. It's something that's common. You've seen a lot of people on Instagram do it. A lot of um, 
beauty gurus and stuff do that kind of stuff. But I think it's fun to put a draggy twist on some of those challenges and makeup looks. So uh, my new makeup series that I've started is uh, the Zodiac signs. So I started with the very first sign in the Zodiac, Aries, also my Zodiac sign uh, today, and I posted it. And I'll be doing all of the Zodiac signs uh, throughout this quarantine. Um, I thought of originally posting them during each season, doing them all and then posting it, but I'm not patient and I know that's something I need to work on. I want to get all of them out there and I want all of y'all to uh, see what is in this weird mind of mine. I'm going to improvise all of them. I'm not going to um, plan any of them out. They're all going to be off the top of my head. I'm going to sit down and then just do a makeup look on the corresponding zodiac signs. So stay tuned and follow me on my socials for that. Yeah, definitely. Um, so everybody, um, we're going to split this episode into two parts, um, cause I feel like there's a lot of great content in the first part. Um, so Donna, how about you take us out for part one of this podcast and hopefully folks turn into part two to get the rest of our digital explanation about where drag is going during quarantine. Absolutely. Thank you everyone for tuning in to a gem of a secret podcast. We will see you next time. You can catch us at a gem of a secret podcast.com where we'll provide links to all of the entertainers mentioned in tonight's episode. Yeah. So my name's Coco gem holiday. You can find me at, at Coco gem holiday and you can find me at Donatella underscore my secrets. Bye everybody. Thanks. <laughs>